Enix, I think it if it should work in any game in this patch, this is the game. So if it doesn't work here, Puck is trash. That's what I'm saying. That's and we're tuned in when I said Puck is trash. That's not what I meant. Yeah, it's just like we just instantly cross over from the mainstream as you say these words. I apologize to my co-caster. He's a hundred percent wrong. Puck I stand is by my words. Puck is amazing, and uh, so are you guys for joining us here on the live stream. Navi versus Secret. It is the second game in our third series of the day, where Team Secret are looking to get back-to-back -back major victories. They already achieved one over on Cloud Nine, and now they're looking to do one over on Navi. Yeah, we're going to see who can pull out on top here as Team Secret going with their Antimage once again and Navi running the Lightning Boys standing here on the high ground together. They're waiting for anyone that will contest their might. Yeah. And it's not going to happen. Uh, Secret have no desire to get involved in this. Zai is making a bit of, bit of a movement down on the bot lane. And you see him preparing himself for a lot of damage. Mango, Tango, as well as South. Mango, That's Tango, you name it, he got it. That's he's stacked. <laughs> That's what he's looking for. Kuro is also hiding inside the pit. Also notice the fact that Kuro doesn't even wait to level up. He goes directly for the Riptide. Not looking for ensnare. He's and, and that's probably just even more confidence in Zai to get Look the at Phoenix. Ball. Look at Phoenix. He's got dive. Is he? He's got to do it. He has the dive already. He wants to steal this. Yeah, but Secret can go. see him, and the Zai is going to move go. forward. If he dives, <laughs> there's your dive down. Oh, so close. Nah, Puck got it. And Zai... He stuck here. Oh, he shards him. Stuck. He actually shards him into Eat. the tree line. He's trying to cut himself Eat. free. It's a contained bird. He doesn't want to be here. Eat. Now when Maud's going to orb up, he jaunts himself through with a riptide to remove the armor. And oh, funny, God, he's so still slow. on the run. And Secret, well, the salve. He's got to cancel it. Well, he can cancel it, but look what you just burned through. He actually... Like, he's only got four tankers Eat. left, and the shards again locks him in. Kuro's got another Riptide. They're oh, actually going to kill Fanuc on the bottom lane. First blood to Secret. Dear God, he ate five tankers to try and get away, and he dies. It really looked like a bird that had his wings clipped. No. The second the first shards came up, it was just like panic. Panic, there's glass walls all around me. But Why like can't I Phoenix, find Phoenix, he has air? risen again, Toby. He's he, back. He, well, yeah, this might be his, uh, his nephew. Yeah. Because uh, that Phoenix is not coming back. Oh, Okay, okay. <laughs> well, unfortunate. So, oh, my. Pretty interesting to see the offlane that they're running here. Aggressive try lane with the Razor, but there's just the AM there. So Secret are looking to win the other two oh, lanes. RTZ. Did he use the salve and get cancelled? He, cancelled, was, he was TPing no. down to the bottom lane. Oh, they want to switch their lanes up, and they just cancelled his TP scroll. Heads uh, up play by uh, art style. And he's also cancelling a pull here. Look at him just moving in and stopping the neutrals. Very heads up. So, like what Art Style is doing here. And this is going to keep the AM stuck here for quite a bit. Yeah, that it will. Or has to run all the way down, but that's not very fun. Yeah, I don't think Kuro wants to come up here either. Uh, he was about to make his way up and then realized that both Snake and Art Style hadn't moved back into the lane. So, they didn't want a bar of it. So, this bottom lane is now Puppy and Zai uh, combining together. And it's a poison touch first level from Puppy. Interesting. Like, a lot of Dazzles have completely skipped the poison touch. But, yeah. He, he's, he's wanting to burn the, uh, uh, at least my assumption here, he's wanting to burn off the consumables here. Oh, oh, they want to dive and kill Funny here. I think that's too much, though. It's oh. a little bit too hard as the ice shards block uh, the entrance, actually. And he'd have to consume the mango to get the snowball up. Yeah, you don't want to use the mango this early. You want to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. But both ruins get to go the way of Team Secret. So the bounty taken out by uh, Kuro. He's going to slip himself back. Artiz, he's still having a horrible time. He's one and one on the CS. There was a very specific reason why they were TPing him out of the lane. Yeah, this is not a fun lane. You can't go up against a Razor as anti mage, especially when he has support as well. Yep. Uh, Artstyle waiting in the corner. He just, he's hoping pull. for the perfect fissure time with the plasma field, or at least a static link can do its work. Yeah. We see Artstyle just running in and trying to get something out of this pull. At least he's going to share the experience, but Humpy. no last is taken. Coming after Dandy. And actually using his illusions to heal bomb. They force the rotation out from Seneco. And because of that now Art Style caught out in the top, goes for the fissure, and Artizi, one more swipe is oh, all he needs. Kuro's so gonna fast. get hit, and now, well, to again the running. There's more support coming up from Puppy. So and Artizi, he's got blink off oh. cooldown, one attack, two attacks, cannot reach the centaur in time. And Artizi, even though he's got one CS, his kill count matches it. As many kills as hero uh, or as creeps farmed. Very nice. Well, that's really good for him. A good recovery mechanic for uh, AM here that Puppy was here, able to find the kill for him. And of course, the help of Kuroki. Havorsto is still is light years ahead. Uh, you've got 17-7 over on the Razor. And Dendi and Mid's having such a great time as well. He's walking around with 18-6. The only lane which isn't going well for Navi is the bot lane. And that's where Funic 
Uh, obviously, he died the first time. He's almost level 4, but he's only got 4 CS. I feel bad for Funic. He had 8 Tangles going to that lane, and he just purchased 4 more Tangles. So that's so much gold going into consumables that his Tranquil Boots are far away. And I can't help but feel if he didn't die first blood there, that lane would have been so good for Na'Vi. Like, he could have Leech experience at least, and probably stayed alive. Puppy's gonna finally get his four minute camp to spawn on the top, so the pull option is open again for Team Secret. A little bit more of a secret yes. ward as well. So a lot more difficult to counter out for Na'Vi. Yep. Uh, Dendi's dropping low, S4. He doesn't have mana for the combo just yet. In like two mana he would, and in fact he's just gonna trigger the orb to run down for the haste rune on bottom. So action rune for S4, always a danger. Curious to see that 56 games on Storm is the most of all players on uh, on that hero. Like, that's not very many. There are some heroes that have been played more than 100 games and so on in competitive Dota. Uh, curious, but 2 and 1 in this patch. Very good hero, I feel, still. Storm works really well. The aggression that you can put with him. I know Blitz would agree. Snowball, bottom lane is Tuscar. I don't know if he's really thinking he can do this Zybe, but he's got Funnik and Arstar right behind. Oh, the Fissure is here. still available. Just try and dodge it around, but the Sigil oh, is tanky. really making it impossible to chase him down. Yeah, they did have the dive and as well as more uh, Fire Spirits available, but he decided not to go for it. He's hey, simply too hard. He's even going to do more damage to Funnik. Gets an eye shot while his Creep Wave was coming in. Yeah, and all those new Tangos are gone again. God, this is a hungry bird. So Hastrun on uh, S4, I'm looking at him right now and trying to see when you he will get his level 6. You might want to look at Snaker instead. Poppy with the Poison Touch. He's going to put himself under and now Teezy actually makes a path to freedom through the tree line. Yeah, path to freedom. Can't really go aggressive against the Razor up there. It's just a little bit of a poke. It's just a nice path in the future. He's got the Quelling Blade, so it doesn't take him oh anything yeah. to cut this. Should always try and do that yep. if your uh, anime can be very nice for you. Phoenix on bottom, used his dive now, so maybe they will go aggressive on yeah, him. But Arstar's still here, he's babysitting, the snowball's gonna come in, Arstar looking for the fissure, and it's gonna be funny to get the kill over on the Tusker, and Kuro, he's trapped, no more stuns, the cold embrace, uh, nice yep, can't use that in an enemy, and he has no stuns. <laughs> yes, that's very good there, Choey. That's why we have you here. I love mechanic. So that means full Tranquil Boots now for the Phoenix, so nice recovery, after having a really tough time, that was a lot of, uh, a lot of baiting going on on bottom lane, until finally. I can't believe he went for a snowball. He had 170 HP and then he snowballed in on the Phoenix. Radiant's and you knew that the Shaker was going to be around there. It was confidence is what it is from Zai. Yeah. Now if he can just leech out a little bit of his experience from mid, he'd actually have his Walrus Punch. Just one creep to die. That's all that needs to die and then he can then he can ball himself in. But he's very visible. The Observer Ward, which is up on the hill, sees his coming. And the oh. Dream Call actually stopping Dave from getting the instant jump away. But the Walrus Punch did They're, not come. They were trying something very, very difficult there. But they almost made it. That was really cool. Snowball in and then cancel the animation Radiant's of the Ball Lightning with attack. the ulti from S4. But they couldn't get the Tusker Punch. If they got that, they would probably have killed him. I actually, yeah. I actually thought they were also looking to pick up the puck on the way through, but Zai, to get the timing right at the same time, you also want to cancel the animation with the Dream Coil. Mm. The timing for it would have had to be absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's a very hard kill to kill a storm like that. That's why I was surprised that they actually went for it, but would have been a, been a cool move. Suppose the silence really isn't that big just yet. Yeah, it's that was what I was thinking about too. Like you have like a level one silence, but that's only 0.75 of a second. Yeah, exactly. Now with the Tuscar punch and the uh, eye shards, the damage would probably have been enough with the illusory orb and the uh, winding rift, but just barely. Now it's our star to help out. Fisher trying to go onto S4 in the mid, and yeah. then Dendi can just ball lightning up. They've already managed to bait out the phase shift, so this Dendi Dendi doesn't have any vision of our style at all. I mean, uh, S4 doesn't have any vision about Sal. Yeah, S4 can't see him. The Fisher's gonna fly. Oh, misses. what a dodge. Yeah, nice He's still timing. got not enough mana. He can't get under the tower. Dyer's hmm. top tower yeah, that was very attack. unfortunate. If that stun landed, I mean, easy to see how he would have been very dead there. S4 gets a tango from Kuroki. What a buddy. And uh, Rune is also spawning, so S4 checking bottom, Storm checking top. Actually, Art Style checking top, holding it. Gotta make sure Denny gets those charges. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Remember that farm on the Animage that was crippled at the start? He's now 28 for 3. He's still nowhere near Havorst, but... He doesn't he's, need he's, to be. He's getting up further. Yeah, he doesn't need to be near Havorst as well at this stage. Like, this is fine for an Animage. It's not great, but he is getting levels and farm to some extent. They have the pull now, which is definitely helping. 
But the first few minutes of the game was, of course, horrendous for him. S4 is finally getting a little bit of stack farm too, so he's going to flash farm a little bit of levels. Yep. You definitely need to recover with the uh, puck because he doesn't farm that fast on lane. So maxing out the illusory orb quite a bit and farming like this is really nice. And running a Naga side on the bitch, not too concerned about that. He could farm up with his illusions if he needs to. And if Denny does jump him, it's under the tower. You might kill a Naga, but Naga also a very tanky hero to try and kill. Yeah, I also believe he ne might need to have full mana on Dendi to go for that kill, or at least a Fisher available. There's four heroes sitting around mid. They really want to take a fight with the Egg now from uh, Phoenix, but they don't have the best heroes to pressure tower. Four In heroes fact, up against just Kuru, like, yeah. It feels like they're letting the AM, Free Farm, and Dazzle pull. As we saw earlier, Puppy has one of the Radiant's highest jungling stats out of the supports here at TI. He does love to kill jungle creeps. He's, he's probably spent more time in the trees than anyone in the world. Uh, out of his support players, he's farming farming a lot from neutrals. Mm -hmm. Played jungler after jungler after jungler for a very long time. Yeah, he knows his jungle. He knows his economy. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he knows. Yeah. How can you get the most amount of money in the game of Dota without having to sacrifice anything? Yeah, and at the same time, we also see the mana boots available now on uh, Kuroki, so he's going for multiple stacks at the same time right now. Let's see if he can make it. Oh, not when S4 oh, starts S4. farming one up. Then again, he took it all out. The Naga Illusion, he's picking, it's like, please move, move, move. Yeah, but they're still actually managing to get spawn on three of these camps at the same time, so very nice. Very nice efficiency there. Oh, he said it. How do you get the most out of the map? That's the way to do it. Yeah, that German efficiency. I like it, Kuro. And then he gets to use his Riptide while S4 farms with Orb. And he's hitting ba basically everything. He's using two camps when he uses that Orb. Yeah. Uh, Snake so go. No, it's just a double damage rune against Zai, but it's more of a zone out of the lane kind of style. It is. Whenever you run into jungle and start farming the Mud Golems with a spell, I feel like, oh, they're so annoying. Dyer's but you oh. have to remember they used to be in bottom kill. lane. Snowball down with the Walrus Punch and Arteezy right behind in the mana point, oh. though. It's not enough damage. 22 life. He's still only actually dropped to 21 at one point. The Splinter Blast will come in and Zai was charged in one second time. So they can put himself under. But Tusker realized he had enough. Arteezy still taking too much damage from the tower. Blinks up and dodges the last one. Triggering, triggering the salve as early as he could. Oh my god, I'm just looking at the stacking going on right now. <laughs> oh, continues. he did it. There's no bowling bottom. They're going Holy after Arstyle, picking up Arteezy on the way through. Arstyle, he will be dropping under underneath this tower. No mana to speak of. These, these tower dives and kills are impressive to me, but at the same time, Kuroki was stacking Ancients, Big Camp, and Medium Camp. <laughs> So he's just all over the place with his Naga Siren and stacking. Radiant's so the jungle is fully saturated attack. and prepared for uh, Team Secret to go in and farm to. And they're just going to take that again, I think, with S4 and get close to that Blink Dagger. Yep. It's that's, really nice to watch. That's stage one. Stage two is Battle Fury on the Anti-Mage. Yeah, then he gets to farm. Kuroki, what a selfless guy. He's just doing it again. Look at the illusions. They're going to spread out to prepare. Yep. Then he's going to stack all the camps at once. They last so long as well, attack. so you can actually he's, prepare them. He's trying to stack Actually, he's trying to stack four camps at once. The hilarious thing is, look at the timer on them. So they time out in 10 seconds time, which is one second Dyer's after everything should spawn. Yep. So it's it's terrific to watch. Yeah. And you got Poppy doing the other stack. So yep. one, two... Oh, he, they, he, didn't, he didn't get it on one of the camps. Failed the big camp. But three out of four ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> Radiance we give him, we give him six out of ten. So Radiance top lane, we see Phoenix still attack. farming on the lane, trying to get. Oh, are they actually going? Uh, they're just going and checking attack. the lane. They're taking the bottom tower really quickly here with RTC and uh, Zai. They're, they're forcing the issue. Like yeah. that's when you look to the last bit of Navi where they took out the Undying, and Secret would be so much more scared to do what they're doing right now if that Undying was up. But really, how does Navi punish Secret? You throw a Fissure. You, I mean, you it, don't have. Actually, now you have Winter's Curse. It has to be through the storm. That's how you do it. Top lane, funny dump, jumping in on Puppy. He's still got Shallow Grave and Arteezy. Blink now comes off cooldown. They go into the into the Nova. Arteezy just gonna get himself away from this one. Puppy will take a stun. He's got a Shallow Grave himself to stay alive. While Zai keeping his distance, he could snowball in or at least shard and All keep running out. Funny. Oh, he went in. The Snowball's going to chase him down, but he doesn't want to. Dendi was there as well. The Sigil making his way, but S4, Dream Calls available. Zai falling back, but Dendi jumps in. Song of the Siren from Kuro, stopping everything. So Zai can back up. He's still burning at the moment. Is he got time? No. Dendi, they're teeping out. Oh, he's not going to do it. All right. If he had a little bit more vision, he might have, but then you have to respect the Anti-Mage being closer by as well. Cut your losses. Let S4 have some fun on bottom lane. 
That he's was not impressive. Good. He's Tiger. Because all of Secret were there for that team fight, and there was only three from Navi. They get a kill and they get out, and they didn't get punished. That was impressive. That's very, very true. They get a thing. Now they get that. Well done, Wonga. Yep. You've now just annoyed every caster watching this game right it, now. It's just the casters, man. Not the players. Oh, the stacks are going to begin again. Arteezy starting his farm on a couple of them. He's already got the Perseverance up and running. Yeah. But it'll take him a lot longer to get the rest of this farm. In fact, he's, he's now... Farming. He's He's cliff chungling. Yeah. This is a fun little thing you can do. You gotta cut down the trees in order to do it, but when you have Crawling Blade, you can easily do this. Yeah. Just blink up and do it. And he doesn't have to take any damage. Yep. It's efficient. I don't think that there are many other spots where you can actually do this trick, though. They're about to try and jump on Denny. I think there's one more. There's a lot of support coming in. Denny, in fact, now jumps on Tuscar. Zai punching him up, but S4 with a blink dagger gets the silence into the ensnare. Denny was not ready for that blink dagger on Puck. Yeah. Puck has been farming so much jungle that they didn't know if he has blink dagger or not. Uh, Very hard Poppy. to tell. And Arteezy. So it's Funnic bad. versus the world right now. Arteezy does have the mana void, the but there's not enough mana burnt off Funnic to get the kill just yet, and he'll actually blink himself away. Yeah. But he does get the kill over on Dazzle. So Funnic 1v2 manages to get a kill, and the tower is now exposed, and he still has his ulti available. Navi is playing really good in this game. Like, sure, they died with Dendi there on the mid lane, but I think they're doing much better than the previous game. Because look at the farm. They have a strong Razor, and there's a great hero for pressuring high ground. This is more of a game than last one. It's a lot closer. As far as the gold goes, it's not even like... You haven't seen much more than a thousand gold experience going either way. Yeah. And the experience was up to Na'Vi at about 1500, but like, it's nothing to write home about in the first 15 minutes. Everything is still very, very close. The Secret is starting to get some items online. Arteezy is now roughly 14, 1500 away from having his Battle Fury. Yeah. Uh, you've got... Well, nothing on the Naga, but you've got the Blink Dagger already over on S4, and he's moving into his next item. The Mech's up on Zai, and Puppy, well, he's a sacrificial lamb in this game. Yeah, all of Secret are starting to get stuff except for Puppy, but I, yeah, this is going to be tough, because when Antimage starts getting his items, we've seen before plenty of times today how dangerous that can be, and Navi, they have to work on a timing. That's the only way that you can do this, so it seems maybe this is a BKB from Razor, but it might just be the Aghanim straight up. It, it looks like a BKB. I, it really does at, at this point. Because if he goes directly for an Aghanim Scepter, the push might be good. But there's just so many ways he can be controlled. Yeah. I, unless Puck picks up an Aghanim Scepter, he's still going to feel fa fairly free with a BKB. Yeah. It's, it's an issue working on the timing. Ideally, you want to have both those Sineko. items. Sineko is going to fly away. Yeah, Arcturn does the work. But the Snowball actually chasing him down. This Arcturn doesn't have a long left on it. And with S4 jumping in. They find a really, really nice pick-off. Oh, and off. a tower. <laughs> just Radiant seems to be a tower, tower here, and they just removed that one as well. <laughs> exactly. So it's just passing through. Then he's moving up to the dire jungle. I think he might be looking for either the anti -mage. He was spotted, though. So they're not going to find anything within this rotation here as he went through mid. I don't think Arteezy really cares anyway. Like, he's, he's looking for something else. Artiz is just looking for gold, man. Oh. That's all he wants. Well, the, he had the double damage tree on him and he would have considered Funic, but with no support, the Fissure thrown out by Artstyle. Not the best place to go. There's a big ancient stack that's happening. Oh my god, that stack. Yep. It's actually a dirty stack. What is this? This w is When this Battle Fury gets done, Artiz moves down to farm it up. If they can have a little bit of help from Dazzle or Tuscar, yeah. uh, that would actually be almost the entire Yasha for Anti-Mage. Yeah. It could even be an ultimate ult for Anti-Mage without, without mana creeps. It could be. It's a 5-stack Ancient right now, so that's plenty of creeps. Looks like Secret again. They're going to smoke up four men. Yeah, but they're Pretty high on up, the map. Yeah, look, look at our style Scrabble. It's like, they are, they are here. <laughs> Secret are here. And he's pinging out saying, yo, Dendi, oh, be Dendi. really, really careful about this. Zai, it's S4 jumping in for the silence. The Boris Punch going to follow up. All the warning was there, and Dendi jumps himself away, surviving on 20 HP. The Song of the Siren will come up. You lost Funic, uh, you lost Arsta in the meantime to Arteezy in the top river. Yeah. But Dendi should be counting his lucky stars he's alive. He definitely should. That was really, really, really close. Man, just a little bit extra and he would have died there. But a lot of stuff was used by Secret, so Navi now trying to pressure mid. Kavost is like, okay, you have cooldowns, I'll try and pressure. But still a little bit intimidating going into this as they do have mech. A little ensnare on Funic. Oh, the oh, Silence. Oh, he starts it back in again! 
He could have stopped the dive there right in front of the Nova. They don't have enough time though. With Dendi jumping back in again, S4. He's gonna die. So is Kurakai and Dendi chasing oh, up after Zai. They're really going in deep. And do they have a vortex? Yes, they do. Zai is gonna be dragged back in and killed off. And what was starting to look like a good engagement for Secret turns around on top of Navi. That was beautiful uh, execution. Top of top tower for Navi. Yeah, top. beautiful execution by Navi. Top, they're defending this as well, so not gonna lose a tier one. Might not, yeah, they're gonna get the tier one tower mid as well for Dendi. That was a good recovery for Dendi. That's huge for him, because yeah. that's practically his orchid. It's the second Oblivion staff. And I'm seeing a Vorse. You're actually right, man. It is a rushed Aghanim Scepter. He's got the other two 1k items over on the Courier at the moment. I'm so smart, man. You are. I'm so smart. Oh, render okay, so render they, have, Waga. they have the full uh, Orchid now on Storm. That's going to allow them to go after the Antimage because he does not have his Manta style yet. So you can actually go in, silence the Antimage, and catch him and punish him. However, Storm might need help to this bring him down. Solo, it, it's a little bit hard. He hasn't got his mana style yet. <laughs> yeah, but look at that stack. Yeah, it's gonna so help tank it for him yep. and the heal bomb. Heal bomb works on ancients as well, so all these illusions are gonna run in. And then bomb. Yeah. Rip tide and cleave. And how much do you get? So he starts at nine seven two. When they start. I mean, this, this camp. hurts. <laughs> Broke can attack it much better than the Antimage can. So much more tanky. So it was 972, and now he's sitting at, with his last Black Dragon, the Lizard going to go down, 2100. That's yeah. a full ultimate orb if he wants it. Yeah, and uh, he will actually pick up the Gladmir. At the same time or as Yasha. Yasha. Oh, they found S4. With the Observer Ward going down, Denny was just a quick jump into an Orca to find the kill. Did not even mention that, but yes, of course, Puck is going to go into the Yule Scepter, but he's far from it. And until you have that, you're also a very good target for the Orchid Storm. I like that he did not go for the Bloodstone in this game, because that would have been terrible. Orchid is amazing here. Mm -hmm. Blitz would smile. Looks like Artizi bypassed the uh, the ultimate orb. Just yeah. Ca just the casual Yasha. Uh, and so, Navi, do you feel confident enough with this Agadim set to now 1300, uh, 300 gold sorry, away for the Razor? And you orc it up and running, even a double damage rune on the Storm Spirit. I'm Do you look for the openings? Do you try and take tier two attack. towers? I think there are there are two things to look for. First, you gotta make Secret blind. You have to find these wards and get rid of them, because as long as Secret know where you are, they're gonna play around you. So if you can kill the wards, then you definitely have the chance to get pickoffs for Storm, and then the push will come naturally with this Aghanims on Razor. So I think they're in a pretty good spot, but Vision is that's the key part to winning the game from Navi's position. They're also looking pretty close to getting their blink on Shaker. That's a very big part. Radiant's top tower is under attack. But while Shaker's being committed to just being a presence on this bot lane, Secret of keeping their distance. Artizi's having a great time. He's farming up and pushing up the top lane, doing some damage into the tier one yeah. tower. He doesn't understand why his team died earlier. Like yeah. dying, dying means you can't farm. It's and even forces a TP moves. up from Dendi. So this push on bottom is just directly Dyer's into the tower, tower nothing more. Yep, it definitely is. And uh, Secret moving together a lot here, but they Dyer's were also scouted by the good word by Navi here. So Radiant's they see that everyone is going towards mid. Dendi in the trees. Poppy's going to walk up right behind him. He hasn't moved just yet. Now Dendi reveals himself. Denying up the town at the same time oh, as the Air Shaker kills the bottom, but there's so many people on top. S4 will happily jump this. He has CD Blink. Two more seconds. One second. There it is. Silence. He's got the Dream Call available as well. Then he doesn't care too much about that, but he cares about being silenced into the shards as well. That Phoenix dive up. Funny, he does have Nova available. S4 being put under. It's the ultimate right now. It's an echo that was holding him there, but the Shallow Grave and Orb away under the cover of the Song of the Son of Kuro, also TPing himself away to safety. They're yeah. out. They're out safe, and they got the most important kill that they could possibly get, killing off the storm. And Artizi continues to farm the entire time. Yeah. And this is the Manda style. You talked about that critical moment when you had that orchid over on the Storm Spirit before the Manda style arrived on Artizi. Yeah. He's now recipe away. Yeah, he's very close to getting it. I like the fact that he did not go for Vladimir's Oh, top lane, diving on Funic here. He might go down very close. He's going to be fine. But yeah, he skipped the Vladimir's in this game, which he hasn't done before, but that's only because he knows Manta timing is extra important here. Mm -hmm. And that does mean you can just go in for the heart later on. Yeah. He might even go back towards the Vladimir's, but I would be surprised to see that. Radiant's I think he will skip it entirely since attack. he didn't purchase it. You could always get someone like Zai to buy it up for, for the team. I know it's great to yeah. have on the Anti-Mage himself, but... Yeah, exactly. It's great if someone has it. He does have the ring, though, so he could, of course, go into it if he wants to. Oh. 
Um, that was probably the intention at the start, but... Yeah. Mandasal up, 23 minutes in. Looking yeah. good. Delivered. And Navi right now, they have pretty good idea of where Secret are. They just need to get out on the field and start taking over, because the more Secret control the map, the more they will just win the game, choking you out slowly. Well, Secret really control a lot of the map anyway. When Kuro moves his illusions around like he does, like he's riptiding down creep waves and forcing out the lane, and they're gonna jump in and take Roshan, in fact. So there's no Vlads, uh, but you do have the Sigil, and it shouldn't be too difficult to bring down Roshan with the damage they have. Yeah, it seems that Navi have the same idea, though. They realize, but are they in time? They're actually S4. too late. Look at him right behind. He's got an Invis oh, room Havos. sitting on top of the hill. The horse will jump himself in. The Shards will be there, and then S4. A three-man silence and coil. A horse isolated from the rest of the team. He's got practically no mana whatsoever. Now Dendi jumping in. The Aegis Immortal is in the hands oh, of the enemy. And the Nova. Bobby position to the mana void. It does so much work. And the animate still alive for now. Puppy with a shallow grave. He still doesn't die himself. Funic, he's trying to jump himself. Well, actually, no, he's trying to just kill off anyone else who's left behind. Yeah, he has and the that's Aegis. Arteezy. He's running over. Arteezy still wants to try and kill off Dendi. He could blink and burn a little bit more, more of the mana, but goes up to Snaker. And he's got an Arteezy. Burn off. Yep, S4 jumps up. They keep the vision on Snaker, but he jumps down inside the pit. But S4 follows him with a blink dagger. Snaker oh, crawling himself away. But now he's down for the count. The gem, as you said, also on the ground. And Team Secret getting the advantage at the end of the fight. Oh, that is so sad for Navi there. They die and lose the gem that they just purchased, going the way of Secret now, so that they can get rid of Navi's wards instead. That is absolutely the worst feeling when you don't even get time to deward a single ward with your gem. Man, very nice play by Secret. That jump by S4, he just shows us why he's one of the names that comes into your mind when you think about Puck. Yep. Actually one of the best pucks oh, out there, Arteezy for sure. Oh, Arteezy dancing, huge jump up. And Arteezy, the Orca damage is not enough to kill him. And still, even then, it's an Aegis of the Immortal, he would have popped only. Yeah, and he has to back out because he's scared of the Mana Void. That would definitely have punished him hard if he kept going. The hilarious thing is, though, the damage dealing, which came out during that fight, was all from Arteezy. And in fact, now Arteezy is not dead. <laughs> no, not dead. Wait, what? In fact, a liver. Right, TP oh, out, oh. Avoir's too oh. late. <laughs> He triggered a jump charge for that one. He's only got one left. And he did he did actually go back for the Vlads. Yeah, he did. So, gonna try and stay on full HP at all times. I can understand how the Vlads is gonna be useful as well. Against a Racer, for example, who has an ulti that removes armor from you all the time. It's nice to have the little extra armor as well. And it just, just speeds up your farming so much. We're gonna see probably a lot of five-man team fights from now on. I don't think that Secret will stop five-manning when well, they have the gem. Especially when they five-man smoke move. Yeah, especially so. against this storm, because you don't want to split up against the storm. Well, Denny's on the other side of the tree line, but he's got a haste rune as well as having two-thirds of his mana, so that's, that's a pretty difficult kill to find. Uh. But the easier one they could find is in mid lane. You see the Splinter Blast come out from the tree line, so they oh, know yeah. Soneko plus Phoenix are here. If they can go on, on Soneko, that would be the best. Oh, he's oh, the big one, the see, uh, They're gonna see Art style. Well, well they found Art style. At least Artizi found him, but they really do want Snake. A double silence from S4 once again with the Dream Call for the Echo Slam. It's a fresh Blink Dagger on Art style, but the damage output, not enough. The Snowball plus the Song. They're not taking any damage. Secret are just backing out. Yep. Oh, he dove into the Song. Artizi wants to jump again. He's got Mana Void available. Yeah, they can't take this fight. Navi has to back out. Even the Radiance Courier getting sniped off at the same time. S4 back in again with a silence into orb. Phonic having to walk away the old fashioned way. He does not have his Icarus Dive available. And Zai, Snowball is up and running. In fact, Artizi just blinks forward. The static link starts from a horse, but Artizi, Glimmer Cape, only lost 28 points of damage. They'll still take this tier one tower in the mid. It's such a difference when you have Aegis and how confident you can play in the team fights. It really shows. Especially on an anti-mage. Like, I suppose this anti-mage is a lot more farmed up than we'd expect from like 15 minute anti-mages with Aegis to the Immortal. And he never died. He's 4 0 oh, 6. Yeah, we talked about slowing down his farm. Yes, he didn't farm that much in the laning stage, but after that, they never got a pick off on him. Not a single one. Even with the early Orchid timing, they couldn't organize two people to go into the jungle and kill the AM. Because Arteezy has great map reading. So, Navi aren't slowing down the anti-mages farm. S4 now has. A Yule Scepter, so he's got something against the initiation of the Storm Spirit. Uh, and Song of the Science being massively effective. A Blink Dagger's on Tuscar for initiation. And even Kuro's walking around with the Glimmer Cape and Jet. Now they go on bottom lane, but Zai blinked himself up. The force will find nah, him, and this die. is the death of Zai. 
that's a very nice pickoff for for Team Navi. As nothing else is really going on on the map, they don't lose anything during this time, and that's an important kill. Apart from mana mage farming, and where does actually AM go here? When the Aegis times out, is it time for BKB, uh, or is it time for I think like, Heart? Just the bigger items. I think Heart is a fine build. Like if you go BKB here, you can still get frozen by Winter Wyvern. I don't know. It would have been okay, but I would trust the the Heart more. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's like RT is going to back up for now. We'll watch it. it. I know. It doesn't it seem a little weird when you stack up both Heart and Vladimir's together. I know the new Vlad's is nice and strong, but... Mm, no, not really. I mean, you're going to sell the Vladimir sooner or later anyway. So you're not going to keep that for very long as an end mage. You have to think about finalizing your sixth slot and thinking about what items you want to have in this game against it. I think... Navi don't really have enough to take long fights, and if you can just survive the initial burst from them, then you're always going to prevail and win the team fight. Well, Artizia is enough for the Reaver if he wants to buy it, so if it is going to be a heart, he could just invest into that life right now. Yeah, BKB is going to make him stronger right now, though, Radiant's than going into a heart attack. build right now. So maybe the question we should be asking is, is Navi ready to fight? And yeah. do you need that BKB now? Do they want to finish now, or do they want to add up like two more items on AM first? Because actually Navi are... Kill on bottom lane. Dendi, he doesn't have that. Now he will. He'll see the shards coming down. Jumps out. Hello, Zai. A uh, simple Orchid Vault. And uh, Vortex back in again. Asta will help out. Atizi was there. Yeah, he wants to punish the uh, Storm. He... Oh, oh, he stopped he him! Does get it. Oh, punish is there. Cancels the TP out. Even S4 finding Arstal on the side with a Dream Call, giving a double kill to Arteezy. Now 4.7k gold in the bank. Looking too easy. Oh, this is really terrible for them. That was a quick counter TP as well by the, uh, by the Anti Mage and Puck. Both of them TP'd immediately as the Tusk was initiated upon. So they were pretty much baiting out that jump. Arteezy's going into his own world, buys a Basher. Yeah. And yeah, Basher is a very strong item as well. So if you go Basher into. Um, any of the later, like any of your finalizing six items, Radiant's it's gonna be really effective against, for example, Razor, who's chasing down Puppy. It's Puppy, yeah. Puppy knows he's dead. Puppy. Of course, though, he's really committing to kill his former captain. Yep. And S4, he may punish him for it. There's still a lot of damage. So there's 224 points of damage stolen. And he's got no other help, so yeah. Might want to wait a little bit longer. But Soneko showing himself on the lane now. That's a lot easier kill for S4 to take. It definitely is. He's going to dive after that. And he, he sees is. the vision. Zai right behind him. The Yule Steps does still got Walrus Punch and Fable, sending him up. And with the shards and sigil, Soneko has to call and brace himself. But now in AM comes Arteezy. You're giving more kills to an anti mage. This is dangerous. He is wicked sick. It's 7 0 6 on an anti mage who has almost 300 CS in 32 minutes. Yeah, he's looking extremely farmed right now. And the net worth really tells the difference here as he's up to 19,626 gold per minute is what he's got. Yeah, just miles ahead of everyone else. This is a terrifying animation. Just going into the full Abyssal Blade, why not? If he does that, he can kill off any hero he wants to by jumping them, apart from maybe Razor. So that could be a fine build. If you feel confident enough, Abyssal is definitely the item to go. It's just not a lot of survivability in that, li in that lineup. Yeah, but if he hasn't died a single time yet, then uh, maybe it's working already. I suppose, too, build. you still got your spell shield. Like, how much physical damage are you really scared of here? Yeah, not that much, honestly. So, uh, going into attack. Abyssal Blade and just being more aggressive. Secret S4 blinks himself down. There's more support coming into the Nova with the Echo Slam from Arstyle. Punishing Team Secret. Puck died so quickly. Zaya's gonna join him in the grave. Both almost a minute on the sideline. Yeah, very big kills. They're getting two of the cores from Team Secret. Radiant's and there's plenty of gold going attack. into Navi's pockets. Yeah, 823 coming into the Earthshaker. All of them got just shy of 1,200 experience from the kills. Meanwhile, in the northern part of the world, it is the Anti-Mage taking out the Tier 2 Tower, walking past the shop, and it will, in fact, be confidence from Arteezy. Oh, he might go on Dendi immediately, as he has the Abyssal Blade now. Does he, he have Manta already? At the same time, he might be a little bit more worried about middle lane. Kuro leaping himself back right now behind the tower. The Glimmer Cave, but the Link is staying on here, and Kuro has to use Song of the Siren. He can hold him here, and now Dendi jumping on Arteezy. Oh, he the actually went all the way in. Now also, with the ulti, is that curse, but Arteezy, he mana stars out. Blink is available, he's up on the tree line. No Arctic burn, and Arteezy, he'll blink himself away to safety. Yeah, that was pretty close, but that was with Whoops. so much help. Okay. All the disables He's fine. going their way. Yeah, 
cutting the trees and just getting away there. He's got lifesteal up and he probably doesn't even have to back from this because of the Vladimir's. And that's one of the powers of buying this item, actually not being able to, or having to back. Man, that was close to him killing the storm instead though. If we weren't fast on the disables there, they did a good job chainless uh, disabling. It's, yeah, instead it wasn't him jumping in, it was Dendi jumping in on him. Yeah. That's why the disable was on Na'Vi's terms. Exactly. Uh, so Roshan's alive again, and Arteezy has arrived. So we give Arteezy the Aegis to the Immortal this time around. There will be cheese next time. But for now, well, who's close? Teddy's in the neighborhood. He's got mana to jump in, but it'll be pretty damn risky to commit himself he to this. He sees people going in to Rosh Pit, though. I don't know. It right. would be too risky, as you say. They have too many quicks disabled so they can throw out. Even just a puck silence would stop him completely. Yep. So I don't think they should go for that play. AM going into the enemy jungle here. He has cooldown blink, but he does see the storm right there. I'll say he was only here for the farm until he, unless he saw a hero. Yeah. I mean, when you have the Abyssal Blade, you always look to find anyone you can, because every single target on Navi is a fine target for him to jump on, apart from the Razor. There is a downside, though, for Arteezy. The fact that now he's carrying this Aegis the Immortal, mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have a TP back. The top creep wave has a little bit of momentum, but it means if this bottom lane play doesn't work... Uh, I think they want to fight anyway with the Aegis, and uh, right now they're going to find fight. a fight. They, they're gonna smoke up and make his way in, but you've got the Song of the Star in available. They can actually keep a boss away from this one. S4 put under for the moment. The Shallow Grave keeping him alive. Yule set for up and Dendi. He's actually the one that contemplates. Arsar jumps in for the Echo Sam. They get the kill over on Kuro, and that Nova is about to hit the ground. They're not killing it in time. Martizi, he does blink away, so there won't be a stun from this. And Dendi isolated underneath popping inside. There's your Shallow Grave again with a TP out. Well, that'll get cancelled. Dendi will drag it oh, back in. Killing up off Poppy everyone. And all of Secret apart from Martizi ends up dying. Wow, that was such a nice, like, nice initiation, finding the puck. If you can get on the puck, a storm, instead of him jumping you, that's a huge difference in the fight and how it plays out. And this is a lot of momentum going the way of Navi. Maybe they can force high ground in a, in a pretty short amount of time, because look at Razor. Look at his item progression. He's going in to the refresher build. So when he has the double BKB and double ulti, he can actually pressure high ground really nicely. Yeah. So one more fight and they could do that. But for now, the tier two towers still remain for Team Secret. So just walking up to go against the tier threes and the racks of Secret is still a fair distance away. And you also didn't kill Arteezy. He's the biggest man on the field. He's probably worth just as much to kill as all four of his, of his allies combined. Yeah. I was surprised that they went so uh, aggressive with everyone else instead of just putting the AM a little bit more in the front as he has the Aegis. Yep. God, the golems just splitting into so many more creeps. Kind of inflates your CS score, actually. Hey, imagine what happens when he does pick up a butterfly. There's no physical damage that will even like have a chance to connect on him. Everything will have to be through magical. Yeah, but everything is pretty much through magical. That's why I was uh, thinking about the heart to begin with. There's only really the Razor and his physical damage output. Even the Storm Strike like, is mostly magical. Five-man smoke from Secret. Looking for their opening. They'll walk underneath the Radiant Observer. Oh, and they see Havos as well as Funnick. Funnick's the first one to get silenced, but Arteezy walking forward and actually blinking over Havos. He does not want to be here. Not yet, at least. Not while that BKB is up and they go in art style. The Abyssal Blade instantly from Arteezy. He moves down deeper, looking for the bash, but cannot get the hit on Soneko. Now he goes in deeper. Oh, he Second hit bash. bash he gets, and the Mana Void to ensure the kill. The gem dropped down, and they go in even more. A force being controlled up by Zai with the perfect Walrus Punch, and they're going in after Dendi with the Snowball. Who's yeah, in so that is mana. just Zai. But he'll blink away in one second time. Actually, not before the Orchid. In from Dendi and Kuro. He won't get there in time, or will they, Arteezy? The aggressive man the front lines, forcing Dendi back. Yeah, very aggressive. The fights are so back and forth. Last fight was on Navi, not losing a single one and killing Secret. Now it's Secret who doesn't lose a single player as they smoke up and find Navi there. Gotta pressure high ground now, and Razor's dead for 45. Yeah, the only buybacks is Storm, Wyvern, as well as Phoenix at the moment. And so many illusions just swarming this tower. Radiant's middle tower. Oh, this is looking grim. I don't think they can hold the mid racks. It's gonna be tough, but with Winter Wyvern responding, maybe they can. But with no Razor, it's still difficult. Radiant's and you do have an Echo Slam. So when the Creep Wave will arrive, Radiant's you'll have a chance. The Aegis is not gonna Arteezy. last much longer. How, how much longer has it got? Like, Arteezy? I don't remember, actually. I didn't time it. It's got another 50 seconds. Okay. So it, it's got time. So it's good for this one push then. 
Yep. But with Razor spawning in eight seconds time, there's no reason to take the risk. Just back it up. Uh, the Aegis will time out, and then RTZ gets his next big item. We actually get an Aghanim Scepter over on a Naga. Now, we don't get to see this very often. Yeah. Aghanim Scepter is a pretty interesting item on Naga, but the way they use it, it could be very nice, because very often they don't use it to set up the fight, they use it to disjoint it. And now instead of backing out... Oh, Arsile! That's easy! He goes in, the Cold Embrace will keep Arsile alive, but the Shards trying to actually stop it, so Arsile just can't walk away. In fact, it's the Naga Siren who will get the Riptide kill on him. Oh boy, Arsile With dying again. He got picked off early in last fight too. No buyback. Yeah. There's no echo save for this fight, so it's easy. They've still got how long left? It's only five seconds. It's roughly on Aegis the Immortal. In fact, not even that. The Aegis the Immortal is gone. They cancel the regeneration. Now, Teezy, I hope he knows. Right now, he's being cursed up, and the BKB's isolating him up. The blink away from Arteezy. It's a force who was the only man out here fighting. Now, the BKB wears off. As the Song of the Siren was controlling him, remember that heals up all of Team Secret. Yeah, 6% per second. It's a lot of heal. Atizi's in. They go for a boss. The Abyssal Blade is still on cooldown for the moment. But then the Mana Void just tearing apart both Funnick and a force. Oh, they God. go in They're deeper. Being that could be it right now. You'll take mid ranks at least. Yeah, I mean, there's 70 seconds on your Razor and Winter Wyvern also gone. The Shaker is up again, but now his team is dead. Where's Team? I don't think that he can do much. No. This bottom rack is definitely dead. The illusions are on them as well. If you come to defend it, you're just going to get Abyssal Blade by Arteezy. And you're seeing, like, Arteezy's moving forward, seeing if there's any target he can Abyssal Blade and just get a quick pick off. Keep the number advantage going the way of Team Secret. Yeah, definitely. They have been playing really tight together, and they will soon have... Arteezy jump. There's your hit. No Abyssal Blade. That was just a first hit bash. And now the Yule Scepter. That's fresh over on S4. Sending him up and Daddy silenced in. And this really is the game. Arteezy's in deep. They get the snare off. And well, Arteezy Vortex. He doesn't really want to die in this situation. He blinks himself away. He's still 13-09. They get a hell of a lot of gold for that one. Storm Spirit. He bought back. So did Phoenix. They're chasing the Puppy. The Nova is down and Puppy. Shallow Grave and TP. No Vortex for three seconds. But the Stun from Funnic will cancel TP. But Arteezy back into the world of the living. He's protected by the Lincoln Spear. Oh, the hanging on Dandy, and they're going to bring him down. They just can't kill Arteezy. The Tusk Carbot was the man that actually claimed the kill. I think that's the game. There's absolutely no way you can turn this game. But Navi, they're fighting to the very bitter end. Trying their very best. They're selling everything on Razor, trying to get the Refresher. He's got the double ulti yes. up. He has the BKB Axe and Refresher remaining. That's all he needs. All right, Havos, what have you got, man? Does he turn on the heat? Arteezy, still again protected by Lincoln Spear. Phoenix sent up by Zai. Havos, he's turned on one of the oldies. Actually, both of the oldies for now. Trying to find it. Arteezy moves in. Abyssal plays back off cooldown. The stun over on a force, and they're just tanking it. Kuro tried to isolate him with the Song of the Siren. Now he's got to turn it off, and actually being controlled by the Fissure of Artstyle. They, no they don't have vision of him. So the Glimmer Cape allowing Kuro to survive a little bit longer. Mirror images himself, and maybe... The oh, the shots from Zai locking him in place. Secret actually bailing out this one, even with the buyback from Na'Vi. Dandy, long jump in, triggers the Lincoln Spear on S4. Arsa, however, RTC still down. He's in the middle of the fight. A force is so low. It's the kill from the Creep Wave on the Razor. Dandy will also die. It's GG. Secret will go 2-0 in their doubleheader games here at TI5 today. Looking strong and looking in charge. Yeah, Secret played really good. 2-0 in the first game today. 2-0 in their second game today as well. Very yeah. dominating performance. They're going to be really happy with that one. After what we thought might have been, oh, shaky start, like 1-1 up against Fnatic. Yeah. They've hit back in every game of the 